Kenty, a very sad day for rugby league. Uh, South Hall of Famer, an absolute legend, passes away today. Yeah, look, it's a. Uh... Look, we all knew he was ill. He was suffering dementia in the in the later years of his life, and uh, yeah, I'm good friends with Scott, his son, and, and you know, occasionally he would film in on how Dad's going. But it's still very much a shock today. Look, yeah, r rugby league, we believe, is the, the toughest contact sport in the world, and Johnny Sattler's legend now is that uh, of all those tough men, he is the gold standard for toughness, and. Uh, it's something you'll never surrender. Mm -hmm. 77 minutes in the grand final with a broken jaw, he pushed it back into place and, and off he went, bit down on his mouth guard, like, mm. would ne will, will never happen again, bro. Never, never happen again. Let's bring the journos in, Buzz Rothfield and Brent Reid, as we just spoken about. Uh, very sad day, isn't it, guys? I mean, you would have had a bit to do with him over, the, over your time, Buzz. Yeah, look, he, Sats was 80. Um, he passed away today in an aged care centre at Southport where he spent his final years. Uh, his son Scott got a phone call this morning saying that time was just about up and mm. Scott went in there and, and he spoke to Peter. Peter Bedell wrote John Sattler's book yeah. and he's spoken to Peter this afternoon about it and it was, look, uh, Scott just shook his dad's hand and he said, look, you can go and join Lurch now. Mm. You can reunite, you know, his great front row partner, John O'Neill from back in the day at South and um, for, a, for a long time he's kept talking about that 2014 grand final. I was actually in the suite with him at ANZ Stadium when South won and he was alongside Bob McCarthy. We got George Piggins back to the football that, that night and the three of those guys and the emotion when that full-time siren mm. left was a really great sort of last memory for me of Sats and he just loved that club. He loved the birds. He loved Madge McGuire. He loved the current team. And yeah, yeah very sad day, mate. Obviously, we're watching the footage of the 1970 yeah. Grand Final. I spoke to a couple of his teammates today, Mick Cleary and uh, Ronnie Coote, about about that actual day and their memories of it. And Mick saying he, he turned around and th there's Johnny beside him on the wing and. Johnny said to him, just hold me up, hold me up, I can't show him, show him I'm hurt, you know. And then next thing he knew, he held him up for a second. Next thing he knew, Johnny's off back in the middle of the field and, and demanding the ball back from his teammates. But the, the, the other thing they said about him was, as tough as he was, and there's no question about how tough he was, they said off the field he was a gentleman, uh, a great bloke, great teammate, yeah. great father, great family man. I think, you know, that's, all, that's as important as he did in the football field. Mm. What, how, he was, how he was remembered off the footy field. There's a great story after that 70 grand final. We, so we all know he broke his jaw. He played the 77 minutes to, to finish the game out. And at the time, he was the Australian captain. And they were going to pick that night, as they did back then, after the grand final, pick the Australian World Cup team to go to, to England play the World Cup. And so clearly everybody had been watching what was going on. And when he first broke it on the field, he, he, he realised if he pushed his jaw up into his mouth guard and bit into his mouth guard, he could hold the jaw in place. So then after the game, yeah, obviously the, the journalists and that who have been watching the game, they used to be Saturday afternoon back then and they had the uh, early editions. So they got down to the dressing room and they said to Clive Churchill, the coach, we need to speak to Sats. So he went to the, to the room and Sats was in a, had locked himself in a little room and he said, mate, uh, you need to come out and talk. He said, mate, I'm just having a bath. And Bobby McCarthy told me the story. He said what he was in there doing was pushing his jaw back into place because he didn't want to, anyone to know he broke his jaw because he wanted to get picked for Australia and still go, with a broken jaw, mm. still go Crazy. and play okay. in the World Cup. And so he basically sat there and, and however long it took, it took a while, and they, the guys started to get a little bit, bit impatient. And they said to him, listen, mate, you need to come out. And Churchill was knocking on the door. Colin said, you need to come out and talk to these guys. And he said, just a minute. Anyway, he finally pushed his jaw back into place. So it was all, all, he looked okay, he checked himself out in the mirror, he looked great, and he came out to talk to the, the journos to basically say, look, it was just a bit of a knock, I, I, I split a lip, the jaw was okay. And, and as soon as he opened his mouth to talk, the whole jaw just fell down, just out of place, and, and everyone just reeled back mm. because of the, the side of it. Uh, but he was, his ability to just push that pain aside, mm. play a game, and then the tenacity to just say, I'm going to now try and get me, he would have failed a medical clearly at some point, mm. but he thought he could get through it and mm. get picked for the Australian World Cup and go and captain Australia. There's a thousand great stories like that, Candy. There really are, just about his toughness. And 
you see players back in those days, they get knocked out. I'm not talking the broken jaw here. It used to be smelling salts and a mm. wet sponge. Yeah. And he played manly in 1972 at Brookvale Oval. And he got knocked out towards the end of the game, Kenny. And he, he got carried off. And after the game, the doctor looked at him and thought, you better go to hospital. You know, it was a really bad knockout. Sats jumped in the car with his wife, Barbara, for the trip home. He, he said, look, I'm sweet, I'll go home. Every five minutes, Barbara had to stop the car so Sats could get out and vomit. It was that... Was a concussion. Yeah. Yeah, and look, look, he was a tough man. Like, and he used to inflict punishment too. That's the other thing. Like, we do get a little bit, uh, you know, rose-coloured, uh, but he was a tough man both, <laughs> both ways. Uh, but the, the thing about it, though, is... He was the undisputed leader at the South. Like, they, like for all those great players in that team, he was the man that they went out behind. Well, not many people captain a team to four premiership wins. Yes. Yeah. And he, did he captain Australia as well? Played four he test matches? Yeah, he captained Australia three times. He played four tests, I think captain three. Uh, but, yeah, he... Uh, and look, back, back in those days, unlike now, where at the end of every season... Uh, there's, uh, there's a tour somewhere and there's four or five games for Australia. Uh, back then, you know, they had the 67 tour, which Kangaroo tour, which he went away on, and the next one was, was going to be the 70 World Cup tour, uh, and then it wasn't the next Kangaroo tour was not until 73. So the, there wasn't a lot of representative tests back then like we see now, which is why his numbers were less than what they would be if he was playing today. But... Kenny, I made the mistake of upsetting him once. Which, <laughs> which is something like you did. Yeah, yeah. We were very shocked. I'll tell you the story. Surely not, Buzz. He didn't oh, mate, it, was, it was the scariest three years of my life. <laughs> <laughs> back in the 1980s. Three years? Yeah. Three years? No, back in the 1980s, <laughs> um, Sats was involved with the Gold Coast Giants, setting yeah. them up. Yeah. And someone leaked to me that they'd signed Ronnie Gibbs. Mm -hmm. And it was desperately had to stay quiet. And Sats was on the board, one of the directors, and he rang me and said, who told you that? And I said, mate, I can't tell you. He said, who told you that? I need to know, because the deal might... I said, Sats, I can't tell you. Mm -hmm. He said, well, wait till next time I see you. <laughs> so, you know what? What'd I you avoided him. Three? I you avoided him. <laughs> three years. I avoided him. <laughs> mate, it was so scary. Would you build a bunker under the house <laughs> or something? <laughs> you're right. But yeah. you're right, you watch those images... And, and you look at it and think, you know, that, that's frightening when you see what happened yeah. in 1970. Mm. In those days, that'll never happen again. <clears throat> again, and to an extent, you sort of you're glad it won't ever happen again. But when you see that, and you see the, yeah. the toughness and the heroism of him on that day. You think, mm. as much mm. as we love that stuff, you're glad that's yeah. an era. Well, you, that's a bygone era. You'd right? love the 11 day well, stand down back then, Kenny. Yeah. Yeah, look, I don't want to get into that. I just, yeah, yeah, yeah. he was a great man. He was always great company. He used to wake his yeah. kids up in the morning and they'd yeah. sing and love mm. to sing. And uh, he was a gentleman off the field. And he is that, 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 that you yeah. know, the, the epitome of that person is a mongrel on the field yeah. and an absolute gentleman off the field. He was a lovely man. The absolute leader of man, John Sattler, gone but never forgotten. The South Sydney Rabbitohs legend uh, passes away today. <laughs>